Hi, this is Nolan from Benchmark, and in today's video, I'm gonna be giving an explanation to one of the most common questions we get about RTK. It's almost universal for someone who's getting into RTK for the first time, and that's the difference between accuracy and precision. Hey, Nolan. Why is my position telling me I'm accurate to within a millimeter, but I'm actually about a half a meter or a couple feet out from where I should be? Now, there's nothing wrong with your RTK. Don't worry, it's nothing's broken. It's working exactly as expected. You just need to know these quick little tips, no longer than two minutes to solve this problem, and you'll be up and running in the field with no issues at all. We're gonna cover what the difference is between accuracy and precision, show you what your base station is actually doing that's causing this, and then I'm gonna tell you how to fix it in under two minutes using a couple of quick techniques inside of Field Genius. Let's first explain what the difference between accuracy and precision is, because that'll make the rest of this video a lot easier to understand. So, as I said, I wanna first explain what accuracy and precision is. So, accuracy is how close your points are to the real data. So, if I have a value of zero, all my, my points are gonna average out to zero. If I am precise, my points are gonna be clustered very close together, but they may not be on the true value. So, there may be an offset. So, what that means is, if I'm throwing some darts at this dartboard here, if I am accurate, but not very precise, my points are all gonna be around the bullseye, but they're not necessarily going to be very close in together. There's quite a bit of variation in all of those points. On the other hand, if I'm very precise, but not very accurate, I'm gonna have all my points clustered together, but there's gonna be an offset. So this is what your RTK position is gonna look like if you haven't tied into control. But for now, just know when you set up your RTK system, base and rover on an unknown point, you have this kind of setup. Now, if I have low accuracy and low precision, my points are gonna be scattered all over the place. There's not gonna be any real rhyme or reason. It's nothing I can use. It's nothing I'm gonna to wanna to use in a survey for sure. Now, if I'm high accuracy and high precision, which is what we want in a survey, my points are all gonna be clustered around this central point. They're gonna be nice and tight and right on the bullseye, and I know that I can rely on those points. So this is where we wanna to get to. This is where we're gonna start. Now let's figure out why we start here and how we get over there. So I've abandoned my whiteboard in the field, I've left it behind, and I now wanna bring you over to the base to show you what is happening to cause this difference in accuracy and precision you're seeing. And I was just talking to a guy this morning actually, who was running into this very problem. He had about a two and a half foot bust on all of his points in the easting direction. And his northing was pretty close, but it was still kind of a couple tenths out. Now, what happened with this fella is he did an unknown or an average point setup. So what does that mean? So when you set up your base, you have a couple of different options. You can set it up over a known point or an unknown point or a local transformation to point. So probably the most common way and the way I actually recommend it most of the time is to do an unknown point. And that might seem counterintuitive based on what I just said. But with an unknown point, you have the greatest flexibility to fix any errors. And what your receiver is doing with an unknown point is it's selecting a point kind of within a half meter circle. So I'm gonna use a spray paint here and draw a half meter circle and I'm gonna run around here. And this half meter circle that I've so elegantly drawn on the ground is about the accuracy of my base station on an average point. It's averaging its position to somewhere within the circle. So it might be over here that it's choosing to be its position. It might be over here, or it might be pretty close to in the middle underneath the receiver, but not necessarily. And because of that, you're going to see a bust on your data. The rover will always be precise relative to my base station. It will always have it shot within a couple of millimeters of each other when connected up to the base station, but it might not be accurate to the real world coordinates. Fortunately, it's a very, very easy fix. So I'm gonna send myself to the office. We're gonna sit down in front of my desk and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to fix this issue to make sure that all of your points are not only precise, but also accurate. The way I typically recommend fixing it is by doing a two-point localization, like I just said I recommended to that fellow this morning. So to do that, I'm going onto our Field Genius Survey Assistant, our training website here, and I'm heading to our one-point localization guide. And I'm gonna to link to the video in the top right corner and to this down below in the description. And we have a cheat sheet here that walks you through step-by-step -step how to do your localization and how to add it to your project. So how localization works is we're taking the position of our GPS, so this precise position we have with the rover, and we're telling it, hey, you think you're here, but you're actually over here. So you're correcting for that offset. So if I'm half a meter off, I'm telling the GPS to move to the true real world position. So now we're not only precise, 
but we're also accurate. There is one other way, however, and that's to do a known point setup. So if you have a monument you've set your base up over, you don't have to do an unknown point setup where you average the position. You can also do a known point setup. So under my base setup here, I can click on second day setup or my known position here. And what I'm doing is I'm, instead of telling the receiver to pick its position and you know, it's kind of picking that willy nilly position within half a meter, it's going to start broadcasting the exact position it's over top of. And that means you're gonna be accurate and precise off the jump without having to go tie into control with your rover. So hopefully that'll get you up and running in the field and you'll be ready to go here. So if you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video or any questions about how this equipment works, maybe you want to get started on it, don't hesitate to give us a call. In fact, this video was inspired by a fellow who sent us an email based on a video on our YouTube channel. So please reach out. I like to pretend that there's other people watching my videos. I like to get your guys' ideas and I love to make videos like this. So feel free to give me a shout at 1-888-286-3204 or shoot us an email at nolan at bench-mark.ca. Please reach out. I like to talk to you folks.